So we are in my living room. We are at my home. This is my sanctuary. This is where I come after a long day and I just relax and unwind and breathe. <laughs> pleasant. It was pleasant. Um, I grew up in the suburb. Me, my mom, my dad, and my brother. They pushed us to try all the things that we wanted to try, do all the things we wanted to do, and they showed up for everything. And then the other part of that is um, I would go to the farm um, in the summer, to my grandparents' farm, and I was a total country girl, you know, running after the pigs and the cows, the chickens. I remember one year we had a turkey, um, not for long, because, you know, we ate it. We went to church a lot. We went to church every Sunday, all day Sunday. And then we also went to church th throughout the week, you know, choir practice, drill team, usher board. And that's obviously where my love for music started as well. Once my parents like kind of discovered that there was something going on with this throat, um, they threw me into voice lessons. They really gave me an opportunity to like learn more about um, music in general and the history of music. Love r and I love gospel, but I also was trained classically. Um, I've sang opera, I've Italian and French and Spanish. A lot of people don't know that and I don't really showcase that part a lot. I think the space that I'm in now, I'm going to incorporate more of that into my music because I want to make sure that I'm letting people know like every layer of me and every part of me. Just in general, like as a person, as a child, teenager, adult, I've always just jumped out there and tried things, even if it got me in trouble. I remember when um, I turned 18 when I was a senior, so I was still in high school, but I was grown. And um, I messed around and went and got my tongue pierced. And I, I hit it very well for a while, a while you know, because it was, it was back there, you know what I'm saying? So I could talk and people wouldn't really notice. But one day I was at church and they were selling Girl Scout cookies and I walked up to my mom and I was like, Mom, can I have some Girl Scout cookies? And she was like, what is that in your mouth? Huh? What is that in your mouth? Open your mouth. Now I'm at church. She, we could have waited till I got home. She was so mad. She made me take it out at church. Um, and I just, I just, I don't know, but I would always do stuff like that. There was something always in me that just pushed me to just go for it and just do it. You know, a lot of those things really catapulted me into amazing places, even me getting on YouTube, you know, I just did it one day, you know, I didn't tell anybody, I didn't tell my parents, um, they didn't know that I was making all those videos and putting them on the internet until I like got discovered. <laughs> and they were like, wait, what? <laughs> when I was younger, I definitely did not see my parents protecting me. Um, I definitely thought that they just didn't want me to have fun and they, you know, they wanted me to live this boring life. But the, the great thing about it is I literally had all the time in the world to sing and write and listen to music and study my favorite singers and really like perfect my craft. I think is why, you know, I am where I am. I, that's all I did. And even when I got into the industry, I would say that JD, um, Jermaine Dupree, I would say that he protected me from a lot too, which I wasn't happy about either at the time. Cause I'm like, I'm grown. Like, you know, I want to just experience the music industry for what it is. I think being affiliated with him and with So So Deaf, it, there was a, a, a bubble of protection around me. It stopped a lot of people from taking advantage of me and even a lot of men from maybe, you know, um, seeing me as prey and, you know, pouncing on me. I think it protected me a lot. 
I'm trying to give you feeling I know you miss that feeling like Ooh, na, na, na I can hear your body calling now for my Skin, soul, and mind I got something special for a whole lifetime The thing that made me like say this is what I want to do is when Destiny's Child came out with their first album. I was like, hold on, who are these girls? I want to do this. Like that's what made me like change my mind and know what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Just the fact that I saw like young black girls, I think they were like 16 when their first album came out. Just like young black girls who were pretty. The music was obviously bumping and they were singing. Like Beyonce was singing down. And then there were four of them. Even if you didn't relate to Beyonce, you may have related to Latoya or Latavia or Kelly. Like there were so many representations like just in this one group. I always had a dream in the back of my mind um, that I wanted to be a singer. But in the front of my mind, I planned to go to school to be a voice teacher or to be a, like a choir director. I was a natural leader. I just saw myself teaching someone else how to be great and how to do it. I didn't really think that me being in front of the camera and being on the stage was a thing. I thought I was going to be the behind the scenes girl um, for a long time. <laughs> All of the, the, the wonderful things that I've learned, even if it was through a tough situation, I just want to kind of like help other people maybe not have to go through the stuff that I did because I ain't have nobody. Um, I had some people, you know, I obviously am so grateful for JD and, and Brian Michael Cox and Jonte Austin um, for helping me like create my sound and kind of like make my own lane you know I, I'm, I'm grateful for them and I've learned so much from them but as far as like a like a close mentor that really like gave me the game and like helped me to not make the same mistakes they did um a woman you know that I I, I didn't really have that to be honest with you now I do but when I first started, like I, I didn't really have that for real. You know, I had people like, cause I want to be clear. I don't want people to think, oh, so she didn't have nobody. So what you saying about da 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 da? No, that's not what I'm saying. But a close relationship, somebody that I could call like anytime to really like break everything down and help me figure out how to you know, manage my money and, and teach me more about the business and um, help me to um, take ownership as a woman, you know, in a male dominated industry. I didn't really have that. So I, I really, really want to be able to do that for girls that are coming up under me and um, give them like a safe space because it was it was tough. And it, and it made me put a lot of walls up. You know, I, I heard Brat say before that she kind of like lived that same type of life, which I think most people do in the industry because it's just so, it's just so dirty sometimes, you know? So it, it forces you to put these walls up so that you're not hurt, you know, and so that you just always protect yourself. So in middle school is actually where I met like one of my best friends. He goes by the name of Broadway. A lot of people may like recognize him or remember him from some of my YouTube videos because we sang together all the time. We did the duets and they went viral and stuff. Um, we would be in his room, my room, you know, in the car. We, we would be wherever just singing. He actually was responsible for like my first studio session. Um, he took me into the studio for the first time. We wrote um, and recorded my first song. And believe it or not, that was only maybe like a year before I got discovered by J Jermaine Dupri. Like, I was not living that life until YouTube. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty important part of my story too because um, 
yeah, he he made me like more confident and comfortable with my pen, with my writing. He's good. He's really good. He's working on a solo project right now, which I'm really excited about because we've been waiting forever for him to drop one. Um, we also have a joint EP that is out. We actually dropped it about three years ago. It's called A Tale of Hearts. And right now we're working on the second installment. So I'm excited about that because, um, you know, we've lived a little bit of life. So I'm excited about A Tale of Hearts 2 with Broadway. Um, I think you guys will like it. Ain't nothing you can say, say to keep me from feeling this way. Yeah, baby, why you do me like you do me? I'm so drawn to you every time you come through. Now, but we're gonna go to the park next. That's where I go sometimes to just, there we go, to relax and unwind, get some vitamin D from the sun, um, and just get out of the four walls because sometimes you can, you can be stuck if you're in the house all day. So that's where we're going next. We are at the park. This is one of my favorite places to come and just almost like commune with God, like in his natural space. I have an amazing relationship with God. I feel like he's, he's my bestie. Um, I've always been in the church. I've grown up, you know, praying and reading the Bible and, and having that as my foundation, but growing into a beautiful young woman um, who has lived some life and um, realized that you have to have your own thing. You can depend on your, your grandmama's prayers, you know, on your par parents' prayers, on the pastor, you know, the, the the first lady of the church, but it doesn't compare to your own relationship with God. Like he gives me a peace, you know, and a joy and a, and a, a comfort I can't get from anywhere else. I would say that I definitely developed my deepest relationship with God um, through some of my toughest times. Um, there was a time when I was depressed and I was just unhappy with like where my life was and I had no vision, no picture of where it was going or what it was supposed to be. I really was like lost and all I knew was that I didn't like how I was feeling. I think the first thing that kind of like started my depression or, or birthed my depression, um, it was my transition from having my single you're the one you know out and on the radio and me touring all over you know promoting and and performing the song and it really just being like the height of my success you know um and the um the success kind of like slowing down you know the speed of of everything and how I mean, it was a whirlwind, so it just all kind of just slowed down. And once it slowed down, and and I, I don't know. It's it, it's like I was I was on a high from all of the praise and all of you know the people saying how much they loved me and the song and. You know, I was on a high from all of that, and that's where I was getting my, my fuel from. So when it all slowed down, I felt like I didn't have anything to stand on anymore. And I didn't have um, a sense of self-worth um, once that happened. So it forced me to look at myself in the mirror and um, just figure out who I was without that stuff. You know, that 
singer, songwriter, um, actress, you know, whatever, whatever title you can give me, they're just titles, but who am I at the end of the day without those things? And so I had to figure that out, you know, and I needed help <laughs> doing that. So I, I did, I called out to God and I said, I don't like the way I feel. Um, this is, I know this is not what you have for me. Um, and then in addition to that, um, a lot of people that were around me, you know, they disappeared, you know, people that were my friends or who I thought were friends, you know, when my success left, they left. And I won't say my success left, but attention. when the attention left, um, they left. And so I just, I was alone. I just really was alone and it was me and God. So I kind of had no choice, which is most of the time how he does this anyway. You know, he has to bring you down to have a com Oh my God. <laughs> Sometimes he has to bring you down to a place where you can hear, you know, to a place that's quiet so that you can actually hear what he's saying. Cause he probably has been talking to you the whole time. As soon as I took off, I never stopped. And there's so many moments that I don't remember um, that I didn't take pictures, I didn't journal about it, I didn't have conversations about it because it was just going, going, going. There's so much that I don't remember because I was moving so fast. I had to slow down and refamiliarize myself with my beginnings and, and my, my connection to the spirit and um, and figure out what my purpose was so that I could do this again, but do it with intention this time. I think the thing that hurt me the most was the people. I was very protected and very sheltered. And so I didn't see the ugly side of people until I got into the industry. I come from a place where everybody's nice and you know, they speak when you pass by them, just saw how people would do anything to make it, you know, and, and no one is safe. You know, most of the friends that I started with, that I met in the beginning of my career, I'm not friends with anymore. Um, because most of them were just there to, to um, use me and, you know, get whatever they could from me and my situation and my name and my connections. And I didn't see it at first, you know, I just, I thought, I really, really thought that these people were my friends and that they were there to share these experiences with me and support me. But in reality, they were jealous and they, um, there's a lot of people that know things about me, know some of my secrets that I'm sure if they haven't told people already, they will. Um, and I've already accepted that and, and figured out how I'm gonna address that when it happens. Um, yeah, people, people hurt me the most. Thankfully, there were one or two people that were along my journey that helped me to process a lot of my emotions and, um, and provide a safe space for me to not have to be on guard all the time um, during this um, phase. Um, but outside of that, I just, I really committed to like building my relationship with God. Like I really made it a thing. I remember probably for like um, a month, I would like wake up at like five in the morning and go to the closet and give God a whole hour. And now I'm like, mm, you probably need to do that again, you know? Because, <laughs> like, you know, sometimes we do that when we need help, but we don't keep it up after we get out of, you know, the situation. Like, you know, we shouldn't do God like that because he'd be, he be looking out. With me doing that, like, I don't know, he just started giving me answers. He started sending people and resources and money. And like, he just started sending anything and everything I needed my way. And it's not to say that times were just turned around. I was still going through stuff, but now I had like the strength and I was equipped 
I was equipped to handle it better, you know, and I wasn't in my feelings anymore about it. It, it was, I was now beginning to understand that life happens. Blessings are going to come with bad things or, th or challenges, you know, um, hard times. Um, but if it's coming to you, then that means that you're equipped to handle it. You're going to need God to manage all of these blessings. Like, it's, forget not being grateful. Like, you're, you're actually going to need him to bring you peace and, and calm your spirit and calm your anxiety because once he blesses you with all this stuff, how are you going to manage it all? How are you going to even know what to do with it and how to, to even take the best advantage of it? I need him to manage all these blessings that's coming or I'm going to go, I'm going to still go crazy. Me and God, we're talking all day. You know, we might be talking on the way to the car. I, we might be talking and I'm in the shower, whether that's with yoga or whether I'm just meditating. Um, I love to journal um, because like I said before, there were so many moments that I missed because I wasn't being mindful and being in the moment. It's really important to me because that is what brings my peace. Um, that's what keeps me sane. That's what keeps me from being anxious. Have you We are in the iconic Southside Studios. Um, this is home of So So Deaf, founded by Jermaine Dupri. This is the studio where I created my first album. The reason I even found out about YouTube was because somebody told me to go in there and see a fight because that's where everybody put their videos. Before World Star, before Shade Room, before um, ATL School, like it was YouTube. So um, I went on there just being nosy. But there were people on the side, specifically Deanna Dixon, um, who was singing. And so I clicked on her and I watched her videos. And number one, she was singing all the way down. Um, and number two, I was like, wait, people sing on here? Hold on. Um, and so it just prompted me to want to put myself out there too. Okay, so um, Fat Fat is <laughs> that's that's my baby you know and there's still i'm still fat fat to this day but fat fat started my career she really did um i received that name in college because i ate a lot but i was like so small so they were like we're gonna call you fat fat and so i just i had that name up until i got on youtube but when i got on youtube i wanted to spell it differently because I knew that there were other people that had that nickname and I wanted to be set apart, you know? So I decided that I was going to spell it P-H-A-T-F-F-F-A-T. And, you know, <laughs> because I did that, you will never mistake me for anybody else. That username on YouTube garnered millions and millions of views and reached the attention of the great you know, Jermaine Dupri and, and really catapulted my whole career is like pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> Hi. I decided to put this on cause I don't want y'all to get bored with the same face and hair and outfit. I wanna put my fingers to your head, put me up in your legs. You know, I've been gone for a really, really long time. I haven't put no videos up. I'm getting all these requests, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. If I let you know, you can't tell nobody. I'm talking about nobody. It's the same accessory, but it's to the side this time. And every time I walk out the door, see I'm not eating noodles today, but I am eating pizza. And it is good. It is.
My first video to reach a million views was Promise by Sierra. I love that video, it was so much fun. I think in the beginning of the video, that's when I was like, hey mama. I think one of the things that people loved and that some people hated was that I always forgot the words, um, like every song. <laughs> After um, my first, you know, million view video, I received a message from JD, Jermaine Dupree, on MySpace. And I mean, I, I, I got the message, I gave him my number. Actually, my boyfriend at the time, he was like running my MySpace. So he was corresponding with JD and he gave him my number. So he called my phone and I just, first of all, I don't answer numbers I don't know. So even though I know that Jermaine Dupree has my number and I obviously don't know what number he's calling from, I still did not answer when an unknown number called my phone. So he left a message and um, I just remember, I, I wish I still had that voicemail, but he was just saying like, hey, you know, I'm JD. I saw you on YouTube. Like, you know, call me back. I'm trying to see what's up. I'm trying to like work. And I was just like, okay, hold on. So Jermaine Dupree called my phone. Like he has my number. Like he called my phone. I called my friends, put it on three-way. Like, does this sound like Jermaine Dupree? We're pulling up videos on YouTube. Like this sounds like, it sounds like, well, what if he has a twin? Or what if somebody, like I done made up every story in the book because I just did not want to believe that it was actually him, but it was him. Um, and so I called him back and it seemed like it happened so fast. You know, we scheduled um, a date for me and my mom to come to Atlanta and just meet him and meet um, Jagged Edge at the time. They were, were just dropping an album. So I got to meet Jagged Edge and just kind of like just fill them out and talk to them and hang with them. And it, it, the rest was history. Not shortly after that, I like packed my bags up and moved to Atlanta to start my album and my career. You know, what's crazy, like my excitement with working with Jermaine Dupree, and I don't know how this is gonna sound, but it, it, <laughs> it faded pretty quickly. You know, I kind of just jumped into working, you know, um, and I just, I just got to it, you know, whatever, what we doing? We were working on Sunday, okay. La, 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 like that, no, okay. Do us part two. I told Dondria that tonight was gonna be the night where she was gonna be the first on sleep cam of the new year. And sure enough, here she is. <laughs> I will say I had a few moments where I was a little intimidated because this room that we're sitting in, everybody has recorded in this room. Um, Mariah Carey, um, Monica, Jagged Edge, Usher, uh, I, The Brat, um, everybody you could think of. I think Destiny's Child recorded in this room. Like so many people recorded in this room. So for me to get behind this mic and be on the other side of this window with sharing space with all of these amazing people before me like I was a little bit intimidated you know and I I did question what he saw in me um and in my writing because he set me up with that too he gave me a track one day and he said write to this and I was like write to what me you got all of these Grammy award winning you know, like amazing writers who have made you millions of dollars and you want me to write my own song, but I did. And any fan that 
really is a fan, top three favorites on my debut album is a song that I wrote, you know. I didn't hear like, oh, this is the one, this is the hit. I was just like, okay, this is the next song we're doing. Um, let's just do it. You know, how you want me to sing it? Okay, cool. And it, the session went great. You know, we did what we had to do. It sounded good when I finished it. But to put it out into the world and into the universe and see how people reacted to it and how much they loved it and how 10 years later, they still want it played at their wedding. They want me to come sing it at their wedding. This is a song that I'm gonna be singing forever. Like, you're gonna perform this song for the rest of your life, Dondria. It's a classic. I have to say, like, I really, I have a classic and I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful for that. I don't believe we were put together not to be together and i don't believe there's anyone out there that can love me better i don't believe that you know how much i'm missing your pretty smile of course we had our ups and downs but i gotta have you around me because i feel it all over my body The Dondria of today. Oh man. Um, first of all, um, I'm independent. Um, and I like it this way. You know, I like being in control of what I put out into the world and I'm able to represent myself in the most authentic way possible. I really appreciate that. I think it's a blessing. A lot of people, you know, in going the independent route. It can be expensive um, and it can be a slow, it can be a slow road to where you're trying to go. But it's a road that I'm proud of. It's a road that I stand on um, and I'm okay with that, you know. And I ventured off into other things, you know. I'm more of a businesswoman now. That has allowed me to get ready to launch a nonprofit that's fighting childhood obesity, create a uh, self-care collection of things, candles and body butters, body scrubs and stuff like that that I'll be launching soon. That has led me to be more vocal about my spirituality and my relationship with God. Definitely more music. Um, I'll be dropping a new EP called Perspective and I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Um, I have a piece, a piece that surpasses most people's understanding and sometimes even my own. I honestly, I see, you know, the version of me when I started all of this and the version of me that I am now are two totally different Dondrias. And I'm extremely proud. I'm extremely proud. If I don't accomplish anything else, I am proud of the woman that I've become. And, and I'm cool, but I want more, you know. <laughs>